Prix Youth, I hope you're doing okay. Welcome to week two of our new series, Game Changer. Today, uh, the, the subject is good stories. And did you know your story can be a game changer in someone else's life? Um, and the, the verse is from 1 Peter 3, verses 15, and it says, But make sure that in your hearts you honour Christ as Lord. Always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks you about the hope you have. Be ready to give the reason for it. But do it gently and with respect. And it's always important, isn't it, to be ready to give an answer if somebody asks us about God or about our Christian lives. Uh, I remember when I was at school and the subject came up and sometimes I wasn't ready for it and I really regretted it. Um, so we should always be ready uh, to not only explain about God and our faith, but why we have the faith that we do. Please remember uh, that there's a Bible plan on you version called Be a Game Changer. Um, remember, you can uh, join in with others, um, leaders or your parents or other youth um, to help you get through that, um, that Bible plan. Um, so I hope you have a great time this morning and a great week. Thanks. Recently, I heard a story from a friend who talked about this kid who had given his life to Christ and on his hand, he took a pen and wrote the word sinner. When he saw that this kid had wrote that on his hand, he, he immediately went to him and asked him why he did that. And he said that he wanted to remember who he was. And my pastor friend was like, dude, that's, that's not who you are. And so he took a marker and marked out the word sinner and underneath it, he wrote the word son. That's who you are. When we give our lives to Christ, we are not the sin that we've committed. We're not our past. You are the son or the daughter of Christ. As we worship today, remember who you are. Remember whose you are. 
and let's worship him with everything we've got. It's moving close now I see Erase the scales from my eyes Then play the scale of my life Chaos played off with a chord and a chord With a source prevented through striving I've tasted suffering, I've been embraced By the painful buffering, I've been bound By doubt so loud right now, but a melody Is made when you play these rusty keys So we all gotta get pressed Tuned up like instruments, but I know All of life's tempo is sad Whenever we remember this Listen in the madness There's peace Drowning out the All around This is just a simple, silly story. Oh no, this card says we have to kick it up a notch. Uh-oh. Hang on for the loop. Four, three, two, one. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. Okay, so in most word games, you don't know the story, but you get to choose the words. But we're changing the game. This time, you get to know the story, but we choose the words. 
I thought it was gonna be a straightforward story. It never is. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. Randomly place the word cards on the board to tell your new story. Then you'll reveal the words and act it out. Oh, oh, okay, so we're gonna like create like a skit. It's, it's not gonna be eating disgusting things or wearing disgusting things. That has yet to be determined, Jamie. Uh. So one by one, we are going to fill the story. So Jamie. All right, I'm just gonna go for right on the top. So we have our noun. Next one is part of the body and <laughs> while I'm here, I'm gonna go with an explanation. Oh, perfect, that's great. So adjectives. Verb <laughs> and noun. Oh. What, not this one? I don't know. Okay, all right, I switched it, remember. No, no, Jamie, no. don't you put this I on me. I switched it. No. And then the last one. All right, verb. Okay, so that is our story. I hope it's a good one. We tell stories every day. But telling people about how Jesus changed your life can sometimes feel difficult. What if you say the wrong words? What if you sound like a know-it-all or a dork? Let's get some tips on how to tell the story of what you love. Uh... Jim scared Jimmy. Hello, I thought I I thought I called him. Uh, Jim scared Jimmy. Uh, hello. Boo. Uh, jump scare Jimmy. You got me again. Why are you so good at that? I was ready to take out my computer. Got oh my you. Good. You got me good. Full you. <laughs> got you, Judo Bob. Wait, what have you been up to? Where Where are you at right now? Well. This is my home, <laughs> my humble <It's> abode. <laughs> you know, I've just been uh, practicing my jump scares lately. I'm not by myself, though. I have my cat, Douglas. I've been uh -huh. practicing them on him, and uh, it's been pretty fun. <laughs> but he's a good guy. We like to have fun around here. <laughs> Does he do jump scares, too? Have you taught him your ways? You know, I've tried. It's tough to teach a cat jump scares because they sleep about 18 hours a day. Wow. What have you been up to, Judo Bob? Uh, well, uh, Judo Bob's just been training uh, his Padawans. So Judo has been a passion of mine since I was, you know, just a little, little dude. Judo is massive discipline. So you have to pour yourself into it. And it's humbling at times, especially when people put, you know, good moves on you. Yeah. But you have to persevere and you have to get better. It's kind of, you know, the same about Jesus, even like learning perseverance and uh, learning humility. What about you? What what got you into jump scare? Oh, buddy, as soon as I was born, my parents were like, oh, I scared them right away on day one. And I, I love it. So jump scares are scary. We know that, at least if you do them right. Right. But they're also fun. Uh, after you scare somebody, you still share some joy. That joy is part of sharing Jesus too. Joy comes from Jesus right. and yes. it's all about sharing jump scares and joy and Jesus. And that's just what I'm about, baby. Wait, where's, uh, is, is Douglas around? I'd love to say hi to him. You know, I was looking for him earlier cause I should feed him. Um, uh, I'm going to try to track him down, but it was still good talking to you, Judo Bob. You too, <laughs> jump scare Jimmy. Douglas, Douglas, where are you buddy? <coughs> Douglas, oh! All right, so we have all of the elements on the board. Let's start telling our story, shall we? One day, Ricky and Jamie wanted a new challenge. So Ricky said, let's dump a sagging balloon full of pickle relish. <gasps> oh my God, a sagging balloon on our, I'm assuming, head. Shoulders. Oh, okay. <laughs> And Jamie, what, what do you think your response to that is? Mozart's armpits. That's oh. hard to say. <laughs> All right. Uh. Oh, we're doing it right now. You know, uh. it's more solid than I thought it would be. I thought it would be much more liquidy. Jamie. <laughs> we can do it. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Oh, it's bubbling. Can you see this? Oh, it's oh, coming it's out like, like a, a little. Oh my goodness, no. Okay, here we go. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Mozart's armpit. That doesn't sound like something I'd say. Mm. It was fun, but not very... 
noisy. <laughs> it was too noisy almost. So Jamie said, I know we can. Anything but eat. Smash! Oh. Yay, that's what I was thinking. A banana? Chunky gravy boat until it's all gone. What? This is not like a traditional gravy boat. This is a literal USA boat. <laughs> it's going to get all over the place. Hey! Got it, got him, hey, got him, hey, got him! <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, this is a gravy boat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think that did it. Uh, okay, and that was fun, but still not aggressive. Oh, aggressive. I beg to differ. Yeah. Ricky said, hey, we've always wanted to. All right, remember Ricky. No. Pretty sure this no, is the Jamie. verb that you made me switch it to. Devour. Oh no. A pizza. Let it be a pizza. Yeah, I'm sure a pepperoni they pizza. pizza. A garden pot of grape jelly and a skull full of unflavored gelatin at the same time. Seriously, I might gag. Okay. L listen, listen. Look at this. Just look. It's just the bounce. All right. One, two, three, go, Jamie. Ah. Um, nom, 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 oh. Nom, nom. <laughs> oh. Isn't this crazy? It's like so. Crazy that we're devouring. Ah. Gross. What's not in it? I'm in it. All right, fine. One, two, three. Oh, oh, oh God! This Get some more. This oh. <laughs> That's gross. I'm just mixing it up. <laughs> Things are different in 2020. <laughs> but make sure that in your hearts you honor Christ as Lord. Always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks you about the hope you have. Be ready to give the reason for it, but do it gently and with respect. 1 Peter 3.15 My name is Riley and I used to be a gymnast. And used to is like the key phrase right there, like I'm no longer a gymnast. Like, it's been a long time since I've been a gymnast. I'll try to show you some moves if I can, okay? But you can't judge me. No judgment zone, safe place. I feel good about it. Ah, oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, don't try any of this at home. Okay, ready? Splits time, here we go. Full, okay. <sighs> All perfect for me, you can't see. These awesome splits. But trust me, I'm doing them. Okay, you get the point. In gymnastics, a big skill that you have to master is learning how to flip. This is as terrifying as it sounds. It's basically launching your body into the air and just hoping that you have enough momentum to land it. Like, yeah, super scary. I was working on the skill and trying to master it. I would fall so many times. Like. Go for it, fall. Go for it, fall. Go for it, fall. Face plant, all the things. Super embarrassing, just really messy, really wrong. I got it wrong so many times, but there was one day where I was like, you know what, I'm tired of falling. I'm tired of face planting. Today is gonna be my day. And I feel like I walked into the gym with more like swagger. There had to be some like really cool, like motivational music behind me, like in my brain, like the Da -da -da -da. I had all this courage and I was like, you know what, today is gonna be the day. And so I get ready, I prep myself, I'm on the mat, I'm ready to throw it, the moment happens, and I land it, yeah! The crowd goes wild. Everybody was cheering, my whole teammates were cheering, my coach was cheering. We were all so excited for me to land that flip. And it's not because I just landed that flip but it's because everyone in that room understood how many times I had tried and tried again and how many times I had gotten it wrong and how many times it had been super messy and face plans and all the things. They knew that and so it made landing it for the first time so much sweeter. 
My mom took me out for ice cream and that's my favorite thing. So like, it was a good day for me. And I think that it's the same with Jesus. Listen, you and I, we can pretend like we're perfect and we've always been awesome and we've always had it figured out and we always make the right choices. I could have told you that I was born doing backflips. Like I was born and then before I could walk, I was backflipping. But those don't make very good stories because they're not God's story. God's story goes, you were reckless, you were messy, you made mistakes, you were rescued, you were loved by me, and now you're restored. You are awesome because of my love. And that's what evangelism is, is it's telling God's story and letting Jesus be the hero. It doesn't have to be over-exaggerated, it doesn't have to be some heartbreaking story, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Sometimes people just need to hear about the hope that you get to feel each and every day because of Jesus. God's good story invites us into a world that is much larger than us. So Luke, let me ask you this. What story are you telling? Oh, it's like gotten a little crusty. Yeah, it's like <laughs> oh. congealing. Huh. Well, the awesome news is we all have different stories. So what's your story, Ricky? How was Jesus a game changer in your life? So I didn't necessarily grow up like in the church, mm -hmm. I guess kind of like around the church. Uh, and so I think I had a pretty different view of Christians kind of growing up. Like I saw that they, I thought that they were kind of hypocritical, like people would say one thing or do one other thing. I don't know, so I was keeping my distance uh, for like, part of my life. Uh, but then I actually met a really cool group of Christians who were like actively following Jesus and like they made it known and they also were very, uh, I guess just different. And just how they were living out their life, like being a Jesus follower uh, made a huge impact on me. And so then I became a Jesus follower myself. That's awesome. How about you? Uh, so I actually did grow up uh, in church, and I say in church, but I mean multiple churches because my dad was a music minister, and so we would travel all around the state going to different churches. There was uh, one Sunday where we were visiting a church, and I decided to follow Jesus at that church. And one of the biggest impacts that following Jesus has had on my life, the biggest game changer that I've experienced is that just because I'm a Christian doesn't mean that I haven't gone through uh, a roller coaster. It doesn't mean that I haven't had highs and haven't had lows. My faith in Jesus, it may not necessarily make my life easier, but it makes it possible to face those highs and those lows. So. Amen. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank well you. said. I think it's natural to be worried about evangelism because, I mean, it's a big word. Have you tried spelling it? Uh, but it's also a lot of responsibility. And the important thing to remember is when you're sharing your story, make sure you make Jesus the hero. Yeah, and I think we forget sometimes that we do that with our words, and sometimes we tell the story with our actions. this idea for a painting of, you know, how do I share what Jesus means to me without using words? Really sharing the struggle of what life can be, but then also the promise of the new life that Jesus brings. Throughout the week as I'm creating this painting, I had neighborhood kids just stopping by and asking questions and just really wondering what I was doing, why I was doing it. So I finished the painting. I'm looking at the final piece and just seeing what God was able to do through the struggle of it, the creative process. And these neighborhood kids are there with me and they're asking all these questions about it, really wondering why it means so much to me. And what was amazing to see in that moment was God was preparing them all along to receive Him, to make that decision 
to see Jesus actually impact their eternity forever. Just because I decided to create and express something that was so meaningful to me. And that day, it shifted completely for them. Oh, yay! I'm so glad that it's on our set! Me too! I mean, it fits perfectly. It feels like it's been here forever. I love it. Always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks about the hope you have. And when you share your story, make Jesus the hero. Everyone is looking for hope, so share it. This, uh, this we made, ew, <laughs> tells quite the story. Yeah, it was very, um, aw. Beautiful. Share your story, and until next time, enjoy, enjoy the, the ride. ride. Get creative. What is one way that you can use your story to show Jesus to people this week? Because each of us have unique gifts, passions, stories that we can use to show other people the love of God. What is it gonna look like for you? Let me pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that you have created each of us uniquely. You have given us talents that we get to use to help other people. And so I pray that we would be looking for opportunities to use what you've given us to show your love to others. I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Remember, get creative. What is one unique way that you can use your story to show Jesus to someone else? See you next time. Big. Big.